hello welcome everybody to our uh next current yes next north american virtual miro user group we call them vmugs for short this is our 18th um and we're excited to have ken bradier here from hnr block to help uh share with us the uh hnr block stakeholder racy that's now posted up in the miroverse so we'll get to introducing kenbra in just a second i see that lorena is coming in and lorena is in hello lorena Good to see you. Okay, um, we're getting a second Kim. Maybe it's another Kim, I don't know, let's see. But I'll just continue because that's the way we do. I'm John White, I'm a management consultant uh, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, which is hot, but not as hot as where my cohort Annie is gonna tell you in a second. Uh, my company, Improved Consulting Group, has used Miro for a little over three years now and it's completely transformed the way I do my work. So I'm focused on helping organizations uh, discover the wonders of continuous improvement uh, and whether we are using Miro to help deliver that kind of work or do uh, assessments for uh, employees and teams, uh, Miro gets everybody on the same page and uh, helps everybody come to that consensus around where we can all do a little bit better and improve the way we do work amongst many, many other things. And I'm so pleased uh, this evening to have with me Annie McLeod, my cohort, my cohort in uh, leading these uh, virtual user groups. How's it going tonight, Annie? You're melting over there? Yes, Jonathan. I'm just very grateful to have air conditioning. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yes, I'm Annie McLeod. Um, as John said, one of the co hosts for the North American User Group from beautiful Kelowna, British Columbia, in the Wine Valley. I'm also one of the founders of the Project Management Game Board, and it's a tool that we use to um, coach and mentor people that are learning project management or first-time project managers, and we use Miro as our backbone for all of our training, all of our coaching and mentoring and, and collaboration. So we're very passionate about the Miro tool. So before we get started, I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of house rules. So please mute your mic during the presentation um, until you're asked to, to come off mic. Um, feel free to put questions on the Miro board. We've got a designated area there um, or in the Zoom chat. John and I monitor the Zoom chat if you've got any questions as we get through. And then um, obviously feel free to crank up your air conditioning because if it's not hot, then we are sharing it and moving it east. <laughs> <laughs> so then the next step would just kind of briefly go through our agenda. So I'll bring everyone here to the agenda. So I've just, Annie, just before you jump into that, I just posted into the Zoom chat a link to our Miro board. So go on and click that. Join us point. in here and Annie will keep <laughs> pulling us to uh, her location on the board. Thanks, John. So basically, we've gotten through our welcome piece. John's going to take us through some pro tips. We're going to do a brief icebreaker that you will see how it's related to our um, presentation later on. And then Kembra is going to take us through that and an activity. So we'll really get an opportunity um, to go through the RACI tool and, and understand it better. We'll make sure we've got time for question and answers. Um, and then we'll also do a brief retrospective. We love to get feedback um, from folks of, of how we can continuously improve. So thanks, John, back to you. No problem. Okay, I'm going to pull us all to me on the board now. Boom, bring everyone to me. So here we have a couple of, uh, we call them pro tips. They can be very well uh, beginner tips as well. If we have anyone out there in our crowd who has not used Miro a ton in the past and um, welcome once again to Lorena and to Mitali for, for joining us. So the number one um, function I like to show folks in Miro is the undo button. Um, if you're looking at my shared screen in Zoom, there's a undo button at the top of your screen right next to the title of the uh, board in the kind of top left of your Miro interface. But as in most word processing or other programs, you can hit Control Z or Command Z to undo your moves. Uh, for zooming, you can use your mouse wheel as the best way to go about it to zoom in and out. You can also hit the plus and minus keys on your keyboard or in the very bottom of your screen in the right, there's a little percentage symbol that shows you how much you're zoomed in. If you hover your mouse there, it'll expand a menu and you'll see some zoom in and out buttons as well. And here's one that's not up on the pro tips board, but if you look 
in the top right-ish of your Miro interface, you'll see all of the user icons, a little kind of blue arrow that can show and hide um, people's cursors. There's also a little smiley face with a little plus in the bottom right corner. And those are Miro reactions. And you can use those at any time over the course of this presentation today. If you click it once, it'll display a menu and you can give a thumbs up, you can give a heart, a little flamey thing. Or if you're shocked by what's being shared, which I know you will be, um, throw open that little shot. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You guys rock. So please make liberal use. You can't use that too much. And if you really have a question, you're getting stuck moving around Miro, use the raise hand feature and Annie and myself will um, give you a handout. If you want to know about any of these other pro tips, you can always come back to this area. Hopefully we made these instructions clear enough and um, we'll keep on pulling you along with us uh, for the presentation. So you shouldn't get lost and should be able to pay attention. That's great. Um, so um, we got a bit of an icebreaker today, Annie, do we? Yes. So one of my favorite themes is Walt Disney. I'm a huge Mickey fan. So Kimbra and John and I came up with this of, so what character do you connect with the most from the Disney? And we've got a whole bunch of characters along the bottom there um, from Disney. So we wanted you to grab a sticky. So take, make sure your cursor is on the arrow part and not the pan. Grab a purple sticky and type on there which character that you like the most and why. Okay, thanks for participating in that, everyone. And anyone wants to, if anyone wanted the opportunity to come off mic and, and tell us a little bit about your choice and more than what the comments we're seeing written here, you can feel free to do so. I picked Woody from Toy Story just because he's kind of a reluctant leader, but he knows what he's got to do. He's able to pull everybody together and get the job done. I always like that about Woody. He makes mistakes, but he pulls through. He perseveres. I love that. So I chose I chose Ariel because I, I do tend to be a little on the naive side. Just that sometimes bite me in, bites me in the butt. But most of the time, I'm kind of open to everyone and want to try new things. So nice. Anyone else? No pressure, though. No problem. OK, I think we're ready to move forward. So this is the part where we get to the real exciting part. You don't want to hear Annie and I rambling on too long. You can come back any month to see that. We're here to listen to Kenbra Deer of H&R Block. Uh, Kenbra is actually the user leader from the Kansas City chapter of the Miro user groups. Um, she's a design thinking facilitator. She's a coach. She's a collaboration designer. She's forgotten more about user and customer experience than most of us will ever know. Uh, and her, her desire to help individuals and teams unleash their fullest potential makes her a true asset to everyone she works with. It's been so fun to get to know her over the past couple of weeks. Annie and I have just had a super time and we know you will too. So let's give it up everybody for Ken Bradier. Thanks everybody. <laughs> Jonathan, thanks for that intro. That was great. Cool. So um, I'm not sure if anyone's had a chance to take a look at H&R Block out on Miraverse, but we're new there. So we're the new kids in town. And so I, as, as Jonathan mentioned, I work for H&R Block. There's probably a few folks who may or may not know H&R Block, but we essentially um, provide products and services to aid our customers with not only tax preparation, but also small business consulting, payroll and bookkeeping. Um, the company was founded Oh gosh, over 50 years ago by a couple of brothers, Henry and Richard Block, that's the name. Um, and we've grown to over 10,000 employees. So I am actually a part of our marketing and experience org. And I too, like Jonathan and Annie, have found Miro to be really an unlock um, with how I work. So what I'm happy to present and kind of walk you guys through is one of a few templates that we have out on Miroverse that I think is kind of game changing and maybe uh, a new way to think about uh, managing stakeholders. So um, my title, official title is an experienced strategist. What I do though, cause you know, sometimes those things are different. I actually uh, do a lot of design thinking facilitation. I do a lot of coaching and I consider myself um, a collaboration designer in Miro. I specialize in bringing people together to solve problems that they really couldn't on their own um, I think a lot of folks don't realize the power of potential in the collective um, as opposed to working on things individually. Um, it's very easy, especially in a big enterprise, to 
get lost in the shuffle and be in our silos. I think sometimes organizational structure can hurt with that as well. And just the size of the enterprise as well. And with Block, I think we've got over 10,000 employees. So it's, it's pretty, pretty big. So, but I really believe that most companies haven't really tapped into the potential of the employees that they already have. And that's why I really honestly am so in love with Miro because it really has helped me to empower teams to bolster collaboration that might've already been there or even start it. Um, it's helped me to help others cultivate empathy with not only our users, but each other. Um, it's been an incredible experience just to build consensus. I know it's, it's so hard, especially with stakeholders to get that alignment. And Miro has been key to that with us. Um, fostering innovation. Everyone has an innovative, creative mind. They just don't know how to tap into it. And I think that Miro has really, really helped um, folks like me to be able to do that. And then uplifting culture. We've actually lately done a lot of team building, um, a lot of value and vision casting um, within different orgs. Um, I, I would work a lot with even teams outside of the org that I'm in, and it's just super exciting. Moving along. So when we talk about a stakeholder racy map, if you haven't had a chance to really look at it or even see what it's about. So um, is everyone pretty familiar with the traditional RACI? As an example, I've added a screenshot here to, to show one. And the reason that we um, started to go with more of a hybrid approach with our stakeholder RACI map is the traditional RACIs where you, you essentially on the left, let's just say column A, you have your deliverable or, th or thing to be done. There's some output that needs to happen. Um, traditionally, you would then kind of across the following columns, identify who the person is um, that's on the team. And then you would basically start to identify R for who's responsible, A for someone accountable, C for someone that's just consulted, and then I for someone who really just needs to kind of be informed. Sometimes these can take a long time to create because you're attempting to manage um, a broad team, depending on the size of the team across deliverables. And then whenever we look at um, a traditional stakeholder map, which if you're unfamiliar with a tradi more traditional stakeholder map, it's, it's a tool from service design and where you're essentially, just imagine a blank whiteboard, everyone's to sticky note, who are the key players on this project? You're then starting to group those players by um, what their, their domain knowledge is or perhaps the org that they're in. It could be any kind of theme grouping. And then you're starting to kind of correlate relationships and show, hey, we've, this, this one's gonna be a bad, this is, this is a rough relationship, which is your dotted line. Um, and then you have those good relationships and then you have, hey, here's, here's kind of the mover and the shaker. Um, so what we've done at h and Block is we've come up with a hybrid of, the best of both of those. To us, this is just right. Um, because we find ourselves oftentimes being in big enterprise, not having <laughs> the luxury of having a lot of time to really manage a more detailed racy. And, but we still want to, um, even with stakeholder mapping, we want to know who is responsible, who is accountable, who should we consult with, and who's just informed. But with our map, we're actually showing also those dotted lines to show those relational aspects and those dynamics. When it comes to like how to use it, and we're gonna give you some time here in a minute to kind of play with it and get familiar with it, but there's a time and place for each. We don't um, necessarily shy away from always doing a RACI, traditional RACI or a traditional stakeholder map. Um, when it comes to the races, like it's really good if you guys are wanting to track those deliverables, if you have less than 10 people on a project, it's pretty manageable. You have the time to kind of create it and manage it. I know that project managers especially can find it very valuable, especially when there's not clarity on A, what is the output and B, who's actually responsible for it. Um, a stakeholder map is also really great. You, you maybe are in a situation where you don't need to understand the R, the A, the C, the I. It's really more about just tracking relationship dynamics. You want to move uber quick. 
it, this is really good for if you have even 10 plus people on the project. Um, super lightweight, really easy to do. You can actually Google stakeholder map and see a number of ways to do it. I think actually Miro also has um, some Miroverse templates out there, but when it comes to our stakeholder racing map, we, we found this best because it's tracking those relationship dynamics, which honestly can make or break um, any project, even more so than the outputs. <laughs> um, it helps us track responsibility. So that level of responsibility, we can move really quick. This is prime just because of the space and how much room there is for it to grow. This is really great for 20 plus people, um, even 50 plus. I mean, it would get a little chaotic, but you could actually manage quite a lot of information here based on that. Um, a couple of things that are important with the map is essentially just understanding what RACI stands for. I kind of covered that a little bit, but when it comes to stakeholders, um, something that we do is we'll identify as an example in our first column here of post-its is it could be the org, it could be a domain area. If you wanted to, you could actually flip this on this head a little bit and actually put a deliverable there if you wanted to. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll actually use these objects. So you see a star, you'll see a triangle and a diamond. Those are just markers and really you can use anything. I've used emojis before <laughs> when I had to do something pretty quick. But the key is to understand who those decision makers are who is that heavy influencer? Who's someone that you need to kind of watch and manage closely? Um, sometimes I'll actually mark those here in the little stakeholder grouping and then copy paste them over to our map. Sometimes I'll do it after they're in the map. But as you can see here, like as an example, um, we have some accountable folks. Um, Amy is an example. She's definitely one of those big influencers, but uh, her and Manuel, they pair actually really well together, and that's important. So I might have that knowledge in my mind, but you as a collaborator with me may not have that knowledge. Um, the great thing about Miro is it's helping us to externalize what is typically tribal knowledge. Um, it's that visual collaboration that's so key. Um, and then in this map, I actually put myself on it and said that I'm just a consultant on this project and Vanessa is responsible, but you know, there's been miscommunication in the past. I actually get along great with Vanessa. Vanessa is in our org, <laughs> but just to give some real life examples, these things are really important to keep in mind. I think sometimes, especially a project manager that might be used to working at this altitude across different projects might have some of this knowledge. You getting into a mirror board with a lightweight template like this helps to externalize those important pieces and parts. So for a quick start, I kind of already gave you just kind of a high level, but this is essentially out of Miroverse, the real easy lightweight setup that you'll see. And this is essentially what we're gonna practice in just a minute. And then we'll have time to dialogue and discuss too. But when it comes to typical amount of people to create this, I one to three people, maybe a few more if needed. It really depends on the knowledge of the group that you're with. Um, it could be that you also create it and start to socialize that board and see what others think as well. Honestly, if you have enough knowledge to kind of know who the primary folks are, it could take 30 minutes or less. It just depends on how much additional research you might need to do. But key steps are just identifying the stakeholders. And it's real important to also um, identify the team that they would be on, or if you want that first column may not be the team. It could actually be a deliverable if that's of importance to you. And then kind of mapping them across the RACI and then starting to use those markers to identify really important relational dynamics or things that need to be kept top of mind. Um, a couple of tips though, asking for help is key. Partner with someone in your company, um, on your team or another team that you know may have more knowledge of who should be involved. Because I'll tell you, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced where you've been told by a certain person or two who should be included in the project, only to find out <laughs> that when you start to socialize the project and talk to others, you find out, oh, there's like a whole team that's been somehow left out. So <laughs> having, yep, yeah, you know, right, Annie? 
having this as a communication point and just externalizing this, even if you don't even use our map, but somehow externalize this in a way that folks can see, okay, this is who's going to be involved and this is how involved they're going to be. You would actually be really surprised at uh, how many red flags that can throw, which are good because that's at the very beginning of the project. Mm -hmm. And I would call out to you, if you don't have strong cross-functional representation in your stakeholders, you're probably going to have gaps. So here I'm giving an example of leadership, product, marketing, content, dev design. I think that's why with our um, Miraverse template, we kind of lead with recommending instead of deliverables, let's focus on um, the domain area that they're focused on because that cross-functional input is super, super key. Uh, Annie, do you have any comments related to that? I heard you giggling a little bit. <laughs> well, I just, I've had that experience so uh -huh. frequently. I even had one project where we got a bunch of the stakeholders in the same room and then they kept saying, giving it, give that stuff to department C. And we <laughs> actually discovered there was no department C, that that oh. was an old name in the organization for a group of people that actually got reorganized out of existence. And hmm. it was a, a trouble ticketing project. And, and, and then we literally discovered why a whole bunch of their trouble tickets were going into purgatory because they were assigned to this group that didn't exist anymore. Kim so, or, or, or Rob or Natalie or anybody, do you have anything that's kind of similar where it's like just having that lack of knowledge has really kind of bit the project in the butt? <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say my experience at Miro um, has been similar to that, especially as it relates to community efforts, because mm. for a long time, we didn't have a full-fledged community team. Um, we just hired a head of community and a user lead. Um, so now we actually have a full-fledged team and in working with them, they're like, wow, there's like 18 different initiatives that relate to community at Miro. And I probably was aware of like five of them. <laughs> Um, so now we have like, they have the huge task of like aligning everyone and seeing how we can better mm -hmm. work cross-functionally. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely know what that feels like. <laughs> well, you have a, a template That's out in your mirror verse that you could leverage if you want to. <laughs> oh, <God>. Definitely. <laughs> I think everyone could probably kind of feel this like, and really when you think of it, when you think of product development, product design, just product work, we are people trying to work better together to serve other people. And it really does all come back to relationship and relationships so, so desperately important. Um, I think sometimes we get so focused on the work that we could very easily overlook that key piece, so. Too true. So, okay. Well, let's do this. So now it's your turn. This is where it actually gets really fun. And we'll, we'll take, it, it won't be an exhaustive exercise, but what we're gonna do is uh, put you in a frame of mind. So scenario, we are collectively, all of us on this call right now, we are a team of consultants, okay? We've been hired by Walt, the Walt Disney Company to help their misaligned teams envision a new Disney character, unlike one that they've ever envisioned before. Our problem that everybody really needs to be hyper aware of <laughs> is there's a lot of great ideas because everybody has great ideas. And this is a creative company. Uh, super uber creative, like creative on steroids, but there's also a lot of cooks in the kitchen and Annie, I know you chose Mickey as your favorite. We're going to pick on him a little bit, but even he wants to be involved. Yes. We're talking about Mickey mouse, but I've heard he's kind of a control freak. Uh, our goal for the next 15 ish, 20 minutes is we're just going to get this project started off the right way just by identifying those key people that should be involved, what their role is, level of responsibility. And I just want to call out right away, we really need to like move Mickey into the inform column like as fast as possible because we do not, he does not need to be a part of the minutia of this. We need to manage him pretty closely. <laughs> so let's dive in. So I'm going to bring us over to our stakeholder race map. Now I will call this out and I mentioned this to Annie and Jonathan. It's like every time that I create, uh, work with this template. I create some other type of version of this. So you're actually seeing, I would say probably version 1.3 of what's out on Miraverse. So it's up to you if you wanna grab the one in Miraverse or if you wanna just jump out here to VMUG 18 board and copy it over. 
but let me just set it up for you really quick. Okay. We're just going to take a minute. So here on the left, obviously we're going to focus on creating a new Disney character. Okay. The whole goal here is not to ideate on that new character. It's about to talk about who are the key folks that should be involved in this conversation. And we're literally just got in the door. And the first thing we didn't need to know are who should be a part of this. We have meetings that we need to set up. We need to know who those key people are. Okay. So overview scenario, just like scenario problem goal, if you need to reference it, but real quick for steps, I'm just going to intro super fast. We're going to take another minute on it. We're then going to identify the groups of stakeholders. We've already front loaded some, which I think you'll probably find amusing. Um, we're then going to place the stakeholders across the map and kind of the bulk of the time is we're going to start to talk about those relationship dynamics and using markers. This is where I want everyone to be involved because in this type of exercise, it's important that everyone is providing input. Even if you feel it's wrong, it doesn't matter. If you're, if you're externalizing it, it's easier for someone to react to it and say, yes, or, oh my God, no. <laughs> and that's actually what we want. In a stakeholder racing map, we're looking for as little gray area as possible, okay? And then down here in the bottom left, if you're confused about um, the R, the A, the C, the I, here's just a reference of, of what it is that we're talking about. So responsible are those folks who generally the core team are the people who are actually doing the specific work. They're, they are the central core. We have folks who are accountable, who are answering for the work. These are often uh, folks in leadership positions. We have uh, folks who are consulted. So these are kind of SMEs and experts and informed are really, hey, you know, we need to make sure these people are kept in the loop. They need to be on all of our emails, et cetera. So, so I've moved our target, our map to the middle to make it easy to work from. And on the right here, let's go ahead and focus on our stakeholders. So what uh, Annie and Jonathan and I have done <laughs> is keeping with our Disney characters, we are essentially talking about, from our team perspective, project sponsors. So who hired us? Um, we have Ursula from the Little Mermaid, so the sea witch essentially, Snow White. Scrooge McDuck, by the way, he's the one that's like really throwing all the money at this, so just keep that in mind. Um, we have Mickey and Minnie, who are subject matter experts. I just want to point out, Minnie was actually not supposed to be on this project. In talking with Snow White, what I figured out is Minnie actually has a lot of influence over Mickey, and so the important part and keep pulling her into the project is to have her kind of help us manage him. Does that make sense? <laughs> and let me know if any of this sounds familiar to like real life stuff, because I'm hoping that it does. <laughs> so for costume design, we have folks from uh, different domains, if you will, cat herding. So project management office, um, Jonathan with Woody, I think that kind of fits very well. You seem, you seem very much like a very good uh, PMO type person. Oh, thanks for the um, the grammar check there too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, engineering. So this will actually bleed over from just like new character creation into actually like coming to the park in some way. And these are key folks that should be a part of it. Story department, that's big too. Um, what is their backstory? What is it that they do? What is it? What are their motives? What are their just all the things? Um, Oversized eye design, Elsa for real, I think. Well, Moana too. No, Rapunzel too. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pro in this. That cute factor consultant, commercial viability. And Annie, I think you added this bottom one, which just killed me. The anthropomorphism lead. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So as you can see, these are all just characters. The whole goal here is if, if we're coming in as consultants, our goal is to really try to understand with those who are already on the project or internal, who are the key players are, but let's also talk about those dynamics. So to kind of uh, speed this up our activity, we thought, you know what? Most everybody knows most of these Disney characters probably. Um, so you can in your mind make up almost this persona of what they would be like. So as an example, our sponsors, Ursula versus Snow White. I think that's pretty black and white. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Haha, <laughs> let's let's do something now. If you want to, I'm going to give uh, you guys. I'm going to add just a, a minute on the timer. Run up to your um, area up top and pull down your Disney character if you want. So, and you can yeah, actually from the icebreaker from the icebreaker. Yeah, and you can copy them down here if you want to, or 
If you want to go ahead and just claim a sticky and just add the name if you don't see it already. So I'm gonna give you guys a minute. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, and I know that we, eh, we're about 20 minutes out. We're actually not doing too bad. Um, let's do this. Uh, let's just start to, and I want everybody involved in this, okay? There's don't overthink it. Um, let's talk about our first column here. Um, you can kind of ignore that, but let's start to slowly move folks from our um, stakeholder grouping over to our map. Um, and I would say this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull all of our project sponsors over to accountable because you know what, if anybody, anybody's goose is going to be cooked, it's going to be theirs, right? Um, Annie, did you proactively move Mickey to informed? If you did, I love you. I did. You just get, <laughs> you, you just... <laughs> I think Kim for many, Kim, what do you think about, I don't know, I want to bounce this off you. What do you think about giving Minnie a little bit more power in the map? Um, I don't know. What do you think? That's kind of what I'm thinking. And then what's here at this point, let's go ahead and pull them over. Um, just kind of bring everybody over. Let's talk about who's responsible. I would say that we probably for responsible should probably have a good swipe of all the different teams in responsible, just so that there's like um, a really good level of involvement from different folks. So like, yeah, you got Olaf, maybe. So Stitch, Stitch could probably just be consulted. I think because you have Olaf in there, I think we're probably good from the cute factor consultancy. Um, that's awesome. So I think we, I think we might have good coverage on responsible. Is there anyone that feels anyone might be missing? I think our subject matter experts are right where they should be. I think our project sponsors being accountable. I think that's, that's legit. Do we, do we notice any cross-functional gaps from our stakeholders on the right for who would be in responsible? I think we might actually have some oh, pretty good coverage. Yeah. It looks like coverage from all. We okay. might've missed the food department. Oh, Annie. <laughs> My tummy is growling. Is it growling? <laughs> so then it, at this point, I would say this at this point, this is where you, it, that's what's so great about just post-its. Let's say food department. And let's just say that, um, I don't know. We'll just add this one as white since it's a new one that we added. You know, Moana doesn't just work on the oversized eye design. She's also really good at Polynesian food. I'm going to copy her over under responsible. And what we'll do is right now, this could even be at the beginning of a project assumptions, guys. This could be, hey, we think these might be the responsible folks. And then we talk to Woody and Woody's like, no, based on my knowledge, I actually think, I think we probably could just consult with Moana. I don't think there's anything right now as part of the first phase of this project that she needs to necessarily be heavily involved in. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're just kind of in that first phase of coming up with this uh, character idea. Um, and, and same with the Sheriff of Nottingham, like he could really, he could really just be consulted. So see, these are those type of conversations that you would have. John's right uh, proactively, which I love, adding kind of this dotted line between Minnie and, and uh, Mickey, AKA Annie. Um, and you can in Miro, which is pretty nifty, you can actually um, double click on any of those lines and you can actually add text in there. So, so I would say that, um, I would say that Minnie's probably a pretty, Minnie can help manage is just what I'll put there right now. And I don't think I spelled Minnie right. So that's okay. You guys know what I'm going. I think when it comes to kind of identifying now the key folks from a decision maker, heavy influencer and managing closely aspect, um, I'm just gonna click and copy on manage closely and just, well, I'm just gonna go ahead, Annie, I'm sorry, but we need to keep an eye on you. So. Yep, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I think another one that's probably really important that I wanna call out um, as you're thinking of all the different possible relationship dynamics of everybody that's on the board, is there anything interesting that you're seeing? Are there any interesting relationship dynamics from a Disney story perspective? 
uh, well, I, I'm just seeing one in the responsible area where we have both Elsa and Olaf um, who sit at wildly different stations within their own Disney worlds. Ooh. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So there might be some power dynamics challenges there. Olaf might feel overwhelmed by the um, by the royalty of Elsa. Okay. Yes, exactly. That's because... a that's a really that's a good one to parallel. Let me move. Go ahead and draw that line between the two of them. And even if we don't have time to write a note, let's just kind of identify that connection just via a line between those two cards, and we could even return to it later. Um, I just want to make sure I've got everybody, the stakeholders over on the board. How about, um, I, I really think so. So Natalie, I know you recognize Belle as being, you know, like your girl. <laughs> I, I feel like there could be some tension between her and Gaston, like hardcore, like, like yeah. get away from me. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do you want to draw, do you want to parallel and draw a line between Belle and Gaston just to recognize that? And we can refer to that later too. Oh my gosh, who are you? John, is this you? Or is yeah, this Annie? That's no, John. <laughs> I had to picture Gaston's the best. <laughs> oh, this is so good. And then now Natalie needs to uh Natalie needs to look for a a, a bell meme that's like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? I mean, I, I think Ariel and Ursula, I mean, I don't think that they're on the best terms, but mm -hmm. I mean, I would probably say that's probably one we need to look out for. So I would say for managing closely for between Bell and Gaston, honestly, I think Bell's okay. I think it's Gaston. We need to kind of look at who else would you guys manage closely? Like what else? Like Scrooge McDuck, heavy influencer. Yes. He's got the money. <laughs> Someone paralleled Snow White with the evil queen from Snow White. That's probably smart. Well, are Woody and, and Buzz Lightyear going to be competing for authority? Oh, oh, that's actually really good. I feel like Woody's pretty laid back, but Buzz could try to like, you're right, he could kind of, that might be something to pay attention to. Do you mm -hmm. want to mark that one, Annie? Sure. So, yeah. So do you guys kind of see kind of how we're doing it? Is this helpful? So, yeah. I think from a decision maker perspective, I mean, unfortunately, Ursula, Ursula is definitely going to be one of those big decision makers. But I do think that Ariel, um, just being informed, we probably could not only inform her about what's happening on the project, but also be informed by her a little bit. So maybe what we do with Ariel is we say she needs to be informed, heavily informed, but maybe even consulted a little bit. I'm just going to put her on the line because I don't know. I think we need to talk to somebody internally about that dynamic and understand that just a little bit more. All right. We have some other parallels happening here. So Judy and Flash from Zootopia, that's probably really, who drew that one? What do you think in there? Uh, that was me again, just um, thinking that Judy is so darn quick and Flash is so darn slow. <laughs> Something's going to go amiss there. So I, I hope, is Annie, are you dropping another picture? This is so good. Is this going to be, is this going to be Flash? Because Flash is so funny. Flash is a sloth at the DMV that's just like slowly like stamping everything and like moving like molasses. So I need to watch that cartoon again. I haven't in a while. So let's just talk about this because we do have a little bit of time left. Does it seem pretty clear? Are there any any questions or John? Oh my God, you're so funny. This is so good. This is so good. <laughs> let's just let's just talk about it right now. So any thoughts or call outs or things that you found interesting or anything that might feel a little confusing with kind of what we just worked through? Maybe more folks are thinking, I actually had a question, Canberra, is um, yeah. I think this is so useful, especially drawing the dynamics and the mm -hmm. uh, setting the markers. Um, how do you do this strategically as to not upset people if someone were happy to, if someone were, you know, come in and would see <laughs> this board? If, I know that we said the smaller team could put this together and yeah. maybe it's just for our leadership team, but how would you do this um, without hurting feelings? That's a really good point. I would definitely, this would, in my mind, being kind of that project management tool, I would probably keep it pretty close to the chest and only in, involve key key people that should help inform it. And that's a really good point, Jonathan, because it's when you get into relational dynamics, 
it definitely gets pretty, it can get pretty complex pretty quick. Mm. Like maybe the, maybe the strategy would be to set everyone where they should be in terms of the racy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's visible. And then version two would be the, the dynamics drawn and other comments put in just for the kind of, that's a really good, that's a really good idea as well. Cause it could be that you're, you have two, two parts of this. I like that where it's mm -hmm. hadn't really thought of that before where you're perhaps just identifying the racy piece. And then on the side, you're, you're mapping those interactions and relationships. Any other do you, thoughts? Do you have okay. any tips or tricks in terms of how often or how, what would be your key driver maybe to revisit this during Ooh. a project? That I, uh, when someone new comes on the project oh, that okay. needs to be in the know, again, kind of the, yeah. And I really like Jonathan's idea of having a couple of views of it. Um, it could even be that you have the racy version on the board that's live and perhaps you've somehow captured elsewhere, you know, more of the dynamics. But I would say anyone that needs to be onboarded to who's who, mm -hmm. um, I would say if any type of level of responsibility changes and you feel like the team is actually referring to this or you're using this as a communication tool ongoing, or like that would be good unless you're the type that kind of sets it and forgets it. It's like, we set this up. It's got us going. We're good. We're adjusting on the fly. What's important is not to be tied to the process as much as tied to the understanding of the people and the dynamics. So yeah, sure. Any other thoughts or input? Yeah. I had something really interesting happen to me a couple of weeks ago doing something similar to this. We were mm -hmm. building a team. So we were, we had people's names on post-it notes and we, we were keeping tight control of who saw it. But somebody pointed out, and I'll just use the board because it works perfectly. They're like, um, well, why is Elsa in the middle? And her name is bigger than Buzz, is also the leader of this group. And it was actually meant to be a, an autonomous team and there would be no leaders. But it, like they were responding to the fact that because Elsa had a shorter name, her name was bigger. And I was like, you know, I never really thought of that. I have to admit that never crossed my mind. No but kidding. With great sensitivity to that. That's interesting. So are you I, saying that Belle, AKA Natalie, feels like she just runs this whole show? Cause I mean, that could be a thing right now with that posted, if Natalie's listening to us. <laughs> Sorry guys. You know, I've heard of this. <laughs> You're fine. I, I've had this threat raised before this, this possible, this concern, I guess, is the way to put it with process mapping that I do. Oh, that box is bigger. Mm -hmm. Would that mean it's going to be more important? But I've never seen it actually come to where someone pointed it out and was hurt or offended or thought it that way. So I don't know if it's something that people see and that's what their mind jumps to um, as a risk, or is it actually someone could get their feelings hurt over, over something like that or, or feel slighted? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And honestly, guys, take out the relational aspect of mapping this. Use, use the template, but perhaps don't even have the markers in there. That could even just be a voice over conversation. You have one-on-one -on -one with a few people, something that's kind of kept top of mind in your own mind and only shared with a few. And maybe you don't externalize that part of it in the board too. So, Well, and, and also any of those things, if, if those get brought up, it's mm -hmm. a great opportunity to have that conversation and figure out what's really going on. Because mm -hmm. yeah, there's there's usually kind of positional power versus you know right? what's their or their organizational <laughs> power versus you know their role in in the project. I mean, I mm -hmm. I know we spent tons of time um, negotiating that and and what we fondly call executive swoop and poop. That, that um, you know, these ex executives come in and, you know, with any of those accountable people, all of a sudden, you know, they show up and the project changes. Yeah. Right. And, and you have good. to have, have a, a long, hard conversation with the team of, of how, you know, you can't let them do that. And, and that's tough in most organizations. I feel like our mark marker, we could actually add possibly, um, and these are really, I'm just going to do this as an example to just show you, it can really be anything that you need it to be. So let's say that we have the poop emoji 
And as Annie was mentioning, the swoop and poop, like could it goofy, <laughs> goofy might try to do that. Goofy is like C suite. Okay. The dude's been around a long time. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I will say this go incognito, don't sweep and poop potential. <laughs> go incognito, don't put a legend for your markers, and no one will be able to read this. Like, just yeah. it's awesome. internal knowledge. It just means you're awesome. That yeah, just don't put the poop emoji because but, everyone's yeah, gonna that, be like, people are chocolate. gonna know what that means. <laughs> so, well, cool. Well, we've got about five minutes left, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this along here. But um, I just I appreciate um, Annie and Jonathan for letting me jump in here and kind of show you some creative ways to use the map. And nothing sh- in my mind, content on Miraverse, content H and R block that's out there. It's all idea starters. Miro is what brings the potential and allows it to be more than even what it is. So don't, I really want to encourage you guys, don't ever be held back by anything out of Miraverse, but perhaps be empowered by it and think out of the box with it. So if you're interested to learn more about Disney um, and Mickey, <laughs> this is actually a really great uh, historical article about how it all began. Um, the racing map, I just walked you through the link is here too. I had the pleasure of um, presenting and facilitating um, a webinar back in March with uh, Miro. And this is the video of that. It's an uh, hour and a half, two hours long. It was fantastic, all about collaborative product development and how at each and our block, we tend to approach that. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I love to connect with people. As Jonathan mentioned, um, I am the Kansas City uh, Miro chapter user group leader. We invite folks, even if you're outside of the Kansas City area, to join. So feel free to become a member there. And then if you want to see all of our H&R Block Miraverse templates, um, here's the link to go do that as well. And there's more coming. So thank you again.